Welcome to another edition of the Dementia Care Partner Talk Show. Now, here's dementia care expert Tifa Snow and your host, Greg Phelps. Hello and welcome to the Dementia Care Partners podcast. My name is Greg Phelps. Uh, joining me as usual is our dementia care expert, Tipa Snow. And first of all, Tipa, a belated happy new year to you. Any new year's resolutions? Uh, try to try to work on my balancing routine of work, leisure, sleep, rest, and self-care. That's, But of course, that's my resolution every year. And every year I sort of work on it. <laughs> so. You're saying, uh, I've heard this one before, work smarter, not harder. Uh, How is that working out for you with the new training center? And tell us all about that. Yeah. So, I mean, I would say that the fun part of having our own space is that it's a familiar environment. And we also have a lot of flexibility in the environment. And people are getting comfortable working with one another. And so, We have local individuals who are living with various forms of dementia, local families who are living with various forms of dementia, um, even local professionals who are resources or are learning themselves. And then we are bringing people in from around the world to master some, or at least be exposed to get better at some skills. And what we're finding is that people are really liking this availability of the various spaces without the sense of being in a hotel setting. So it has this opportunity. We can be in a living room setting. We could be in a let's have fun cafe setting. We could be in a bathroom where we can actually look at equipment and look at a setup and ask questions like, are you ready to take a shower? (laughs) Answer is no. And instead go, oh, now washing up sink or shower and we actually have the the visual cueing that allows a human being to look at this and realize oh i need to give a stronger visual cue because they weren't following my visual and i actually wasn't turning my body enough so they could see it and so what we're finding is people like having these real opportunities to try things out and folks living here love being teachers so it's turning out to be a win-win for folks. Have you had any particular revelations uh, in this regard? Because it's one thing, you know, we always visit the facilities and you continue to do this, but you're there for a day or two days or three days. Now, all of a sudden you're there and you've almost taken on the operator role. Has that sort of given you a, a the other side insight? Well, I think one of the things that makes me appreciate more and more is the value of a skilled visitor, (laughs) a visitor who really knows how to slide in and not have an agenda, uh, how to come into a situation and be observant before you start to try to do things, and how too many bodies in one space, I don't care how thoughtful they are, can create a sense of tension and distress and how audio feedback can really impact people and how going outside can feel really uncomfortable or super comfortable depending on what I'm seeking. So I think as an operator, I am finding, boy, people are interesting, um, which I always knew, but giving them things to do that give them a sense of value and purpose really does seem to make people more committed to being in community, which is You know, I've always known it, but it's been fun to watch people like, oh, yeah, no, I'll do that. And it's like, thank you. Well, yeah, no, I'm done with my class, but I don't mind staying over and helping out. It's like, I appreciate it. And that builds that community. It's interesting. Many places in Canada, the United States, and I'm sure other countries are having trouble with staffing levels. Mm -hmm. And they take people because they need a body. And so how do you deal with that? Because that's, again, something you would have to consider because you you now are wearing two hats with this. Yeah. So we have to figure out how folks fit in and whether they fit in or whether this is like it's a temporary match. It's sort of a stepping stone on where they're headed. Maybe maybe what they have to offer for people who are here isn't a good match for their skill set. So the question becomes, do you want to develop some more skills or are you not interested in doing that? And you'd rather be in a setting where people don't make those demands of you. 
Um, because what it looks like, it looks like you could do this. The question is, do you want to? And if you don't want to, uh, we so appreciate you coming. And yet this may not be a good match because the expectation is you you will not only you got you can see it, you did it. I know you can do it. You got to do it. And so maybe this isn't the right place because you don't want to do it whenever you can. You want to do it when you want to. And that's fine. I mean, you should find a place where that works. That's not going to work here because we really want people to be present and recognize, wow, there's somebody in greater need than I am. And I can make a difference. And I will because I can. And if I can't, I'll acknowledge it and say I need a break. And that's fine. But then you have to be able to come back. And so it's like, well, sounds like this is really stressful for you. I'm wondering if you may want to look at some alternatives because this is this is what we do. <laughs> and this is how we do it. And this is this is it. And if it's not a good match, it may not be a good match. And that's OK. But maybe you can use some of the things you learned here somewhere in your life. And I'm good so with as, that. As you know, I talk a little. And uh, one time I asked you, I think it was, what if you invest all this money in training somebody and they leave? Mm -hmm. And you said, what if you don't train them and they stay? Yeah. That really sort of, I went, oh. Yeah. So, and Yeah. But for me, if I train them and they leave and they use any of the things they learned there, well, somebody's benefiting from it. And that's that wider worldview, because, I mean, my goal is to change the whole culture of care. And maybe they get themselves in some situation where that skill pops up and they go, you know, this stuff really does work. And they don't know that until they're there. And I don't know it until they're there. I may never even hear about it. But if something happened somewhere that was a plus, or even they said to somebody else, you know what, you should go visit that place because you're one of those folks. And it's like, Hey, thanks for the referral. Um, I think all too often we see it in black and white. And I see everything as possibilities of shades of gray or shades of color and possibilities. Have you ever been stuck for words? I, not since I've known you, but have you ever sort of just gone, hmm? Yeah, I've had one of those not too long ago. It was just like, a jaw dropper, um, observing something. And it was just like, I wanted to be able to say, wow, but I couldn't even let my breath out. It was just like. Maybe we just I, won't reveal what that was. <laughs> no, we don't want to reveal what it was because it's one of those ones you go, and they call this care. And now I can go, wow. At the moment, I couldn't even get a wow out. I was so blown back by what I was hearing and seeing. It was like, oh, I couldn't even go, oh, oh. wow. So and if somebody has questions story, about the learning. Greg, if it had been in real time, I probably would have <laughs> needed to do something. But because it was recorded, my doing something was, uh, yeah, one of them was actually watching the ad. Oh. <laughs> Oh, yeah, an ad. Yeah, there was this recording. We, that's a whole other story. Though. <laughs> so if somebody has questions about the Learning Center, how do they get information? Is this something that's open to people? I mean, there's a whole bunch of questions come to mind or should come to mind. Where can we get more information? Yeah, we actually have Snow Approach Foundation. And so it's snowapproach.org. But we also have links, I think, from the PAC, the TIPA Snow website, we have our own website. We have all kinds of pictures, videos going up. Um, we're trying to get the two pieces to come together because truly it's our training ground for all PAC personnel who want to come and get in person. Um, although we continue to do our virtual work and in, in other places as well. But if you want to come local, come visit, um, check us out at snowapproach.org. And we have, a, we have an 800 number too. We have a number, not 800. There's a number. Uh, It'll get posted. I'm not so good with these number things. You There's think too many. <laughs> Deepa, thank you very much. Thank you, Greg. You've been listening to the Dementia Care Partners podcast. For more information on today's program or other dementia-related topics, go to tipasnow.com. Hi, I'm Tipa Snow, and you just found our YouTube channel and watched one of our videos. I'm the owner and founder of Positive Approach to Care. Thanks for watching. And if you liked, if you have a comment about, or you would, please share it with people you know, 
Ooh, and if you haven't yet done it, consider subscribing. We'll let you know when the next new video comes out. And you might want to visit our website, www.tipasnow.com, where you'll find other resources as well. See you there.